All right, Israel and Zion, I'm back with the next talk, which is the next part, which is uh, part 18. Okay, we're going to finish off now. <clears throat> we're going to head over to uh, Genesis. We're going to read Genesis again, which is Genesis 22, 15 to 18. And now we understand, we have a little understanding of you know, it was all set up by the Most High from the beginning. Um, he, the Lord, just declared the end from the beginning. And um, this is his will, you know, and he showed his will. I uh, showed you he showed his will to uh, Abraham. And Jesus, he said, um, I come to do the will of him. I come not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me, which is the Father, the saints and the elect. The church, the body of Christ, is going to know the Lord's will, and they're going to do the Lord's will because the will of the Lord is is revealed to God's people, Israel, which is the saints and the elect, the church, um, God's church, and they're going to be the ones to know His will and to do His will. Okay. Now let's head over to Genesis twenty-two. 15 to 18. And the angel of the Lord called, 15 to 17, Genesis 22. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abram, Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, say of the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. So now the Lord said to uh, Abraham, he will bless him and in multiplying him, he will multiply his seed as the stars of heaven. And as the sand which is upon the seashore. So there are so many stars, you know, a person cannot number them. The sand of the sea, a person cannot number them. So Israel, Abraham's seed will be huge, the Lord is telling Abraham. And, um, but the thing is, the Lord is only saving a remnant. The Lord is only saving a remnant of Israel. And that remnant is the 144,000. Um, which is sealed in the book of Revelations, uh, I believe chapter 7. So that's why Paul explains the remnant according to the election of grace at this present time. Um, Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. That's the promised seed, the church, the body of Christ, the saints, the elect. Okay? So only a remnant the Lord is going to save. Let's head over to Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So the Lord told Abraham, and in him all the families of the earth will be blessed. Right? Now, I told you, and I took you back to uh, Israel, the Most High, <clears throat> already knew from the beginning, before the foundation of the world, before the Lord created the, the earth, you know, and Adam and the things in the earth, the Most High already knew the Israelites in the Old Testament would transgress his law and break his covenant. He already knew that. That's why I showed you with uh, Moses in Deuteronomy. He told Moses when he called for Moses and Joshua and he said um, to Moses that he would sleep with his fathers and the people would go after the idols and he will hide his face. They will forsake. Um, he will he will hide his face in that day from them. Right. And he already knew this because the most high declared the end from the beginning so the lord said um 
for I knew they would not hear me, meaning Israel, because it is a stiff-necked people. See, because the, the, that seed of Israel, the rebellious seed of Israel, they didn't have a heart to perceive and eyes to see. You see, ever since the Lord brought them out of Egypt through Moses, Miriam, and Aaron, but the, the Lord had a seed to whom the promise is made, and he's going to give them an heart and eyes to see. And he will put his law in their inward parts, and he will give them a new heart, and he will put his spirit within them, and they will fulfill his law. That's the promise seed, which is the elect, the saints, the church of God, the body of Christ. That's the seed whom the Lord Jesus Christ came in the end of the world for. Now... That's why I showed you these things before we, we went into the talk about in thee shall all nations be blessed so that you can understand, you know, come into this with, you know, with, you know, you can understand what more better, you know, as I explain it to you. All right. So the most high I already knew Deuteronomy 28, I believe it's uh, verse um, 13. Deuteronomy 28. There's a lot of scriptures about the Most High scattering Israel among the heathen. That he would do that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. And... 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So Egypt just means the house of bondage. And the Israelites are scattered to all the nations. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. And no man shall buy you. But I, sh but, um, I don't, I'm not sure if I told you, but Jesus Christ, he redeemed them. That promise seed, though, from among the heathen. Um, that's why the, the scriptures say, you know, for Christ, um, he came, he became the curse for us, for curses everyone that hangeth on a tree. Um, and when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth his, his uh, son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that was under the law. Those that were deemed that was, that was, under the law was the 12 tribes of Israel to redeem them that was under the law. So that's what Christ came to do. Um, that's why the Bible says, you know, um, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to them that believe and all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. But we'll talk more about that. God was willing in Jesus great glory name when we get up to the talk of the law. Now, um, because the Most High is going to put his law in their inward, inward parts, that promise seed. He's going to give them a new heart. He's going to put his spirit within them. Um, he's going to cleanse them and wash them by the word, the gospel of Jesus Christ, his word and son. And um, he's going to cleanse them from all the filthiness. So he had to scatter Israel among the heathen to consume the filthiness out of them by the gospel of Jesus Christ, the, um, the word. All right. And the water, they're clean. The water is the word. They, they're cleansed by the word. That's why Paul explains that he may sanctify it, which is the church, by the washing of water, by the word. Um, John explained, he shall baptize thee. John said, I baptize thee with water unto repentance, which is the physical water. But John explained, he that cometh after me, whose shoes I am unworthy to, to loose, which is the Christ. He shall baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost. It's not my word like fire, and like a hammer that break the rocks in pieces. Okay, so the word has a body. So the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. So the, the word, the wisdom, the knowledge was made flesh and came and taught the church, the saints and the elect, uh, how to become perfect in the end times. All right, but okay. So Deuteronomy twenty-eight and sixty-eight said the Lord will bring them into Egypt again with ships. <laughs> all right, so all the nations is Egypt. Um, 
I can uh I can show you that in the apocrypha when we head over to Second Ezra's. Fifteen, and we start at verse ten. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell, <clears throat> dwell in the land of Egypt, but I will bring them out with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. So he says, smite Egypt with with plagues as before is because the Lord sent the plagues upon the land of Egypt when His people was in Egypt in captivity in Egypt in the time of Moses and Aaron and Miriam. So he said he's going to do it as before. So Egypt is all the nations. That's why all the plagues is upon all the heathen nations, even right now and to this day. Everything you see that's happening in the world right now, the plagues, the, fam uh, the, plagues, the famine, the, the pestilence, um, the earthquakes, the floodings, the, the, the storms, um, the, the rivers, the water turned into blood and, you know, these storms and everything that's happening right now in the world today is all it's the plagues of the most high because he's smiting Egypt, which is all nations again. And uh, he said the plagues is not slack. Now, the Lord said, I, but I will bring them out with a mighty hand and a stressed out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. Now, he's going to let you know the Lord is going to let you know when we jump down. To, oh, let's read 12. Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and, pun and punishment that God shall bring upon it. Let's jump down to verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. You see, woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Um, 20. Let me see. Do I need something else? <laughs> Okay, so the Lord said, woe to the world and them that dwell therein, because the, the world is Egypt, all the nations. Now, when you jump over to verse 27, for now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. See, remember in verse 12, the Most High said, verse 11, he said, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm because his elect, his church, his body is in all the nations. So that's what Jesus said when he come, he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and um, they shall gather his, his elect from the, from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. That's all the nations. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stressed out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. Now, when you jump over to verse 27, what the, the Lord say, for now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. See, so he said Egypt, but then he's saying the Lord is saying the plagues is going to come upon the whole earth and ye shall remain in them for God shall not deliver you because ye have sinned against them. Um, that's why the Lord said immediately after the tribulation of those days, because the saints and elect that remain upon the earth, that's not going to taste death from birth until the second coming of Christ. They have to remain in these nations while the plagues is happening. Um, some teach about a rapture, you know, but the saints and elect, the church of God are staying in the world while the plagues is happening. And then immediately after the tribulation of those days, Shall, shall the sun be darkened, the Lord said, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Um, that's why when you go to, uh, because the saints and elect have to stay in here. Those that are, um, that didn't taste death from birth, they're going to remain in the nations while these plagues is happening. The Lord is coming back at his second coming, which is immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now, when you head over to Revelation 7, this is why was, the scriptures say here in 14. And I said to him, sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation. See, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Because the saints, the elect are going to escape the perils and hardships and the things, the plagues that's coming upon the earth. And the, while they're in the nation, they're, they're going to escape it by the faith in God and his son, Jesus Christ by faith in Jesus blood that's how they're going to escape it but they have to they're going to be here you know during the time of the plagues coming upon the whole world Egypt
all right? Um, but we've been taught about a rapture that before the tribu before tribulation and, you know, things happen that, you know, people will leave. But um, the scriptures let us know that, you know, the saints and elect are going to, the church of God is going to remain in the earth with the plagues happening uh, until after the tribulation of those days. Uh, the Most High let us know here in verse 27, for now all the plagues come upon the whole earth and ye shall remain in them. See, for God shall not deliver you because you have sinned against him. So the plagues is coming upon the whole world and um, yeah, the saints and the elect are going to be here until the second coming of Christ. All right, so I just wanted to show you that. So all the nations are Egypt, the house of bondage, which the Lord redeemed the saints out of the, the, the nations, though, with his blood. They've been purchased and they're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption, till he come and gather them. So they've been purchased. You, um, they've been purchased. That's why it says in uh, Revelations. That's why it says in Revelations chapter five. Um, no, not that one. These were Revelations 14, I believe. And verse three, this is the 144,000, the elect. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song, but the 144,000, which were redeemed from, from the earth. You see? So they was redeemed from the earth, right? Verse four, these are they which were not defiled with woman, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, from the earth, the nations among men being the first fruits unto God and to the lamb. See, they're already, they're, their salvation is Christ. The church salvation is Christ. And they already been redeemed and sealed and purchased by the blood of the lamb and God. But they're going to be remaining in the nations until Christ come and gather them. Okay, so all the nations is Egypt. I just wanted to show you that. Now, so the Lord said in Deuteronomy 28 and 68 that they would go into Egypt with ships, right? Um, they would be sold for bondmen and bondwomen and no man shall buy you redeem you, which the, the lamb redeemed the elect, the promise seed, the church. So I was just showing you that this was all set up by the Most High from the beginning. He declared the end from the beginning because the Most High already knew he would have to scatter the Israelites among the heathen and consume the filthiness out of them. And among these nations that Israelites went, they were called Gentiles. They were called Gentiles and, um, you know, but through the gospel and they were called unclean in the eyes of the Jews in the land. They wasn't accepted, but through the eyes of God, if the, like the Lord um, explained to about Peter and Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, um, Peter explained, he said, um, then Peter opened his mouth and said, Acts 10 and 34, then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that feareth him, see, is Israelites in the, in, the, in the heathen nations at this time. But in every nation, he that feareth him and work of righteousness is accepted with him. So if a Israelite is in a heathen nation, they're from another nation and they're, um, they fear the Lord and they work in righteousness, then they're accepted with the Lord. You see, he's not a respect of person. So they're accepted in his eyes, you see, because they're cleansed and washed through the gospel of Jesus Christ. So they're accepted in the Lord. And then Peter, go down to verse 36, he lets you know that God sent the word to the children of Israel. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, pre preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. 
when you go to um, John 11 and 52, and he shall gather the children of God that were scattered abroad, James 1 and 1, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. So the Israelites are among the nations. They're scattered abroad. So they're scattered. That's why the Jews asked Jesus, whether will he go? Will he go to the dispersed? Dispersed means scattered among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles. See, because a lot of you, uh, Israelites are among the heathen nations and they are called Gentiles. Um, when you go to Ephesians, this is why Paul explained here in Ephesians. See, before the, the Gentiles, the Israelites were called Gentiles before they came into the truth. Um, Ephesians 2 and 11, wherefore, remember that ye being in times past, or they were in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision. They were called the uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands that at that time you were without Christ. See, because they were without Christ. That's why Cornelius feared the Lord. He believed in the Lord. And that's why the Lord sent him to go get Peter. Cornelius was an Israel. He's an Israelite from another nation, you see, but in the eyes of the Lord, he's accepted. That at that time you were without Christ because um, before before Christ came, the Lord was dealing with Judah, even from the time of after the Babylonian captivity, um, when he sent only Judah back to the land to build the second temple. Judah was the only ones that went back to build the second temple. The 10 tribes uh, didn't return because they went to the Syrian captivity and their they're where they at even unto this day. That's why Shiloh, the Christ, he's going to come and gather them also. Um, it tells us in 2 Ezra 13, he will gather another peaceable multitude, the 10 tribes. Now, God was only dealing with Judah because salvation is of the Jews. Do some of the Jews of that's born in the land, do some of their rejection, salvation come unto the Gentiles and the rest of Israel, which is the 10 tribes. That's how the Lord set it up to save them. But we'll talk more about um, that as we move forward. God, Lord, is willing. In Jesus' great glory name, amen. Um, verse 12, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. See, because they wasn't accepted, Gentiles. So they were being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. But through the Lamb, through Jesus Christ, the Gentiles who are Israelites are reconciled and they're accepted and they're in the body of christ now that's why it says um there's neither jew nor gentile because in the body is no separation everyone is one you see that was the point when christ died on the tree on the cross to reconcile the 12 tribes of israel there will be no more division or petition which is division between them because during the time of Solomon, the 12 tribes were split. That's how they were split is through Solomon's um, when, uh, disobedience when he broke the commandments of the Most High. And the Lord, um, that's where you get into the kings of Israel, you know, and they were split. The Lord was dealing with, uh, he wasn't dealing with uh, 10 tribes. He was dealing with uh, Judah. And... Um, that's when they were split. But the prophecy in Ezekiel 37, 14 to 22, I believe. Um, to 20. Yeah, 22. They will be neither two kingdoms no more. They will not be split anymore. That was the prophecy that God was explaining to Ezekiel, the prophet. And he was showing him about putting the two sticks together because that was showing that the ten, the 12 tribes will become one. And that prophecy is fulfilled through Jesus Christ when he died on the tree on the cross. He reconciled them to one through his body. That was the point. Um, okay, let's go back to Ephesians 2 and 12. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers. See, strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. But now through the blood of Jesus Christ, those that are far off are made nigh by his blood. See, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Verse 17, 
and came and preached peace to you which were far off and to them that were nigh. So we'll talk more about the people far off and nigh as we keep going. God, Lord's willing, in Jesus' great glory name, amen. So I just wanted to show you that. So the Gentiles and uh, the 10 tribes, they had no hope and without God in the world. The 10 tribes are called Gentiles also. See, because um, if the Lord wasn't dealing with the 10 tribes, as you read in Hosea um, 1 and 6, the Most High was dealing with Judah and they were not his people. But the point was for, you know, Shiloh to gather uh, the 12 tribes of Israel through his body and make them one, which is their one by um, becoming a new creature in Christ, which is putting off their old man and putting on the new man. And um, because circumcision and uncircumcision avail of nothing. That's what Paul was trying to explain. Uh, the Jews were, you know, the circumcision and the Gentiles are uncircumcision. So they were the unclean. They were called, uh, they were not accepted. They were uh, unclean in their eyes. But in the eyes of God, they're cleansed through the gospel of Jesus Christ, the word, the water, the water, the word is which cleanse the Israelites. Um, the most I said, I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. I will sprinkle clean water upon you. And Ezekiel 36 and 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you by the word, uh, the water, the word. That's how they're cleansed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, okay, let's keep going. I just wanted to show you that. All right, a little talk about, you know, a little bit of talk about the Gentiles, but when we get to the talk about it, I'll explain, it'll, I'll explain more about it. Uh, God, Lord is willing in Jesus' great glory name. Amen. All right, so. So they were um, that at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Um, let's jump down to verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners. See, because if you're not uh, Israel, if you're not Israel, then you're either heathen or Gentile. That's how it is. The, the nations are heathen and Gentiles. And then Israel is God's people. So if you're not an Israelite and God wasn't dealing with the 10 tribes, they were not his people. So they are called Gentiles. Okay, because it's either, it's either Israelite or heathen or Gentile. That's how it is. Verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, see, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God. Because in the body of Christ, there's neither Jew nor Greek nor Gentile because they're all one now. And the Gentiles are, um, they're in the body of Christ also. So everyone is one and of the household of God. All right. So I just, that would be it from there. And let me see. Um, let me see something. When you go to first Peter chapter two and verse, you jump to nine to 10, but ye are chosen generation of royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people. See the most high in the old Testament call Israel the peculiar people because he chose them above all the nations of the earth and he still requires that them to still to them to be a holy people is the most high didn't change it's just he made a new covenant with the house of israel and judah and he will put his laws in their inward parts this time but you are a chosen generation of royal priesthood and the holy nation peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness which is Israel into his marvelous light. The light is Jesus, which in times past were not a people. Who was not the people is the 10 tribes of Ephraim from Hosea 1 and 6. So this is talking about 
the ten tribes, which in t time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained, have obtained mercy. Because through the unbelief of the Jews, of some of the Jews, not all of them, not all the Jews in the land rejected Jesus Christ. Some of them did believe on the Lord. And he gave them power to become the sons of God. It's just do some of the gents, some of the Jews in the land, through their unbelief, salvation comes on to the rest of Israel. Uh, Paul's, Paul explains this in Romans 11. And uh, verse 30. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy. You see, because the mercy will come to the ten tribes of Israel. Um, through, uh, the mercy is Jesus Christ. And Jesus explained to the Samaritan woman, for salvation is of the Jews. So doing this, do the unbelief of some of the Jews, salvation comes on to the rest of Israel. Yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy, they also may obtain mercy. For God have concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. See, that was the point because this is the Lord's will. He declared the end from the beginning. So that's why the Bible says, for they both fell short of the glory of God, because the 12 tribes is the ones that, it was the 12 tribes that transgressed the old covenant. So that's why they both fell short of the glory of God. You see, but salvation, Shiloh, he comes from the tribe of Judah. He is the salvation. So he comes from Judah and he's the salvation of the Jews. But the Lord set it up that they do the rejection of some of the Jews, salvation come on to the rest of Israel. And that's what Paul said, for I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, because it's a mystery, but the mystery is revealed to God's saints. Uh, he said, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness is part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. See, it was till the blindness has happened to Israel. It wasn't meant for all Israel to understand. It was for that remnant to get it, the promised seed, um, to understand. And the rest of Israel were blinded um, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the, the, uh, the, the deliverer. That's in, uh, I believe that's Isaiah 59 and 20. That's prophecy. Uh, the deliverer will come out of Zion. Zion is Jerusalem, Judah. That's where the deliverer, Shiloh, he comes out of the tribe of Judah from the seed of David. And he is the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. From Jacob is Israel. Um, and, and so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. That was the point. You see, Paul explained, he said, and so all Israel shall be saved. Because as I explained, Paul even explains it. He says to the Jews, see that you put yourself unworthy of everlasting life lo we turn to the gentiles see it was for the lord to gather the gentiles who are israelites and put them um and they will be gathered with uh the jews and they they will be gathered together in the body of christ that was the point and um the the grafting in of the tree is just israel being grafted back into their tree uh, but we'll talk about that talk as we keep going also. God, Lord, is willing. In Jesus' great glory, name, amen. All right. So I just wanted to show you that a little bit about that. So that's why the Bible says the Lord concluded them all in unbelief, which is in Galatians. So they both fell short of the glory of God because they both transgressed the most high's uh, covenant. The 12 tribes of Israel, Galatians 3 and 22. But the scripture have concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. You see, they both fell short of the glory of God, the 12 tribes of Israel. Now they're saved by God's righteousness, which is Jesus Christ. Because when you go to um it was it was about the transgression that was under the old covenant. They, remember, they were the ones that broke God's covenant. It wasn't just Judah. It was the 12 tribes also. It was the 10 tribes also. When you go to Jeremiah, I'm not going to get much into it till we get up to the talk, but I'll just talk a little bit about it real quick. 
when you go to Jeremiah 2 and 29, the Most High says to Israel, he said, Wherefore will ye plead with me? Ye all have transgressed against me, saith the Lord. See? So they both transgressed against the Lord. So that's why when you go to Romans, it wasn't just Judah. It was also, um, it wasn't just the 10 tribes. It was also Judah. You see? Judah transgressed too, but Shiloh, he comes out of Judah. He is the salvation of the Jews, which he is the salvation for all Israel, you see. But Shiloh comes out of Judah. When you go to Romans 3, so the Lord said, ye all transgressed against me, right? When you go to Romans chapter 3 and uh, 22 to 26, now, since they transgressed the old covenant, they both broke it. So that's why God explained in Jeremiah 31, verse 31, that he will make a new covenant with who? The house of Israel and the house of Judah. So the new covenant is Jesus. So he said he will make the new covenant with the house of Judah, the southern, and the house of Israel, the northern. Why? Because they, the 12 tribes a whole as a whole, they both broke the old covenant. So he's making a new covenant with both of them again. Now, they're saved by God's righteousness, which is Jesus Christ. Romans 3 and 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So the southern and northern kingdom both sinned and, sh and came short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remissions of sins that are past. See, from the sins that are past uh, through the forbearance of God to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him, of him which believeth in Jesus. See, from the transgression from the old covenant, because when you go to... um. Hebrews chapter 9 and 15 that are passed through the forbearance of God 9 and 15 and for this cause he is the mediator Jesus Christ of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament see because who broke the first covenant the first uh, testament it was the 12 tribes. He all transgressed against me. That's why they both fell short of the glory of God. And he concluded them all in unbelief that he um, might have mercy upon them. See, the mercy is Jesus Christ. So do, do um, Shiloh, the mercy comes to the northern kingdom. Also, who is not was not called the people, in, you know, from Hosea. Now they become the people of God through Jesus Christ. So which which were under that were under the first testament. They which are called might receive the promise of an eternal inheritance now. You see, it was because of the transgressions that were under the first testament through the forbearance of God. You see, as it said in uh, Romans chapter uh Romans chapter three and twenty-five to declare his righteousness for the remissions of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. See, because the Israelites, um, when they broke the 12 tribes, when they broke the old covenant, um, they transgressed and broke the old covenant. Then they became the enemies of the most high. But through his, by their belief in his son, the wrath is turned from them, you see, and they're reconciled to the Lord and they're at peace with the most high through Christ for breaking the first covenant. <clears throat> when you go, that's why it says Paul is explaining in Romans 5. And um, see, even though the Most High, even though the Israelites, the 12 tribes as a whole, broke the old covenant, the Most High love for them, he didn't uh, cast them off and, and was done with them. He sent his only son to die for them. Even though they were the ones that were, the Israelites were the ones that messed up. God still sent his son to, for them. Romans 5. And. Um, 6. For when we were yet without strength. In due time Christ died for the ungodly. 
for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. That's why the the the, um, the plagues when they broke the first covenant, the plagues went upon the twelve tribes of Israel, like Moses was explaining. The Lord was explaining to Moses to Israel, the plagues will come upon them. You see, they would be scattered to all the nations, and they would be a byword and a mockery among the heathen, and you know because they became now they're the enemies of the Lord because they broke the first covenant. You see, but now by the 12 tribes accepting his son, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, the word, they at peace with the Lord now. Because the Lord wasn't dealing with them when they broke the, the most high was mad at them when they broke the uh, first covenant. But the Lord, he kept Judah, though. You see, Judah, he uh, he kept the tribe of Judah because he was sending the salvation out of Judah to save the 12 tribes of Israel. The salvation would come out of Judah to save the 12 tribes of Israel because the Lord, um, his rest is in Judah. His rest is in Jerusalem, Zion. Um, so he, he wasn't dealing with the 10 tribes, but he kept the tribe of Judah. Romans 5 and, and um, 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, because sin is the transgression of the law. So the, is the 12 tribes as a whole, not just Judah broke it, and that was it, and not just Eph, uh, the 10 tribes of Ephraim broke it, and that was it. They both broke it. So God concluded them all in unbelief. That was the point. So he can save them both. He concluded them all in unbelief and he will have that mercy upon them and save them both. But God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us much more than much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. See, for if when we were enemies see because they were enemies when they broke the law the, the most high's covenant with moses and they they transgressed the law they became enemies it's just like how the whole world right now is the enemies of god you see what i'm saying the heathen is the enemies of the most high through christ the 12 tribes have peace with the most high for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life see the Israelites that don't believe in Christ they're already condemned it tells us that in uh, John see because the ones that will accept the Lord is the saints the elect the church the promised seed that were um, predestined chosen and called before the foundation of the world they will be the ones that accept the lord jesus christ john chapter um john chapter 3 and um verse 15 that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life for god so loved the world which is the world of israel that he gave his only begotten son, just like Abraham offered up Isaac, his only begotten son, the Most High did the same with his son, Christ. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. That's why Paul explained blindness is part has happened to Israel to the fullness of the Gentiles come in. So all Israel shall be saved because the Jews in the land, the Pharisees, a lot of them, it was appointed for them to stumble, as the Bible says. That's what Paul said, what Israel have not obtained, which he seeketh for, but the election have attained it, and the rest were blinded. You see, because um, the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 6 and 10, that, um, close up their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and convert and be healed. See, because... Um, Uh, what I was going to say. Yeah, so Jesus, the, the, the promise seed, the remnant according to the election of grace, that's the seed that the Father gave to Christ. That's the, the seed before the foundation of the world, the one he already knew, the seed, the church he already knew. That's why Jesus said that thou, those that thou gavest me, you see that they may be one as we are one because though the, the promise seed is going to accept his son Christ, um, that's why Jesus, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. 
You see, Christ prayed for them, not for the world, he said. Um, let's jump down to 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, um, which is the world of Israel, but is a remnant, the promise out of the world of Israel. It was not, it's not all Israel. Um, it, it's the remnant, the promise uh, God said in uh, Isaiah, because he said in Isaiah 45 and 17, uh, 17, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be, you shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Um, world without end. And that's why when you go to, uh, I believe it's Ephesians chapter 3 and 21. Let's start at verse 19 and to know the love of Christ, which passive knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Um, scriptures is talking to the church, the saints and the elect. Now unto him that is able to to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end. See that? Amen. Who's the world without end is Israel. That's the world. Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed, nor confound the world without end. The Lord is speaking to the church. Uh, let's go back to John 3 and 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through, but that the world through him might be saved. See? Israel shall be saved with, in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confound the world without end. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. See, so those that didn't believe of Israel are already condemned because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Um, for everyone that doeth evil hate of the light neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved but he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made be made may, may be made manifest that they are wrought in God all right so I just wanted to show you that real quick so the point was they both fell short of the glory of God and that's why it says um, the 12 tribes. That's why it says in Hebrews chapter 9 and 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, which the 12 tribes as a whole broke. That's why God made the new covenant with both of them again. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal of eternal inheritance. All right, now let's get back to Genesis chapter 12 and let's read verse three. And, uh, and the Most High said to Abraham or Abram, Genesis 12 and three, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now, when you go to Jeremiah, remember they were split. They were split. All right, the 12 tribes are split, but through Christ, they're one. So this is why the Most High said this in Jeremiah 31 and verse 1. Because in the end, they shall be his people and he will be their God. Because they will be gathered by Shiloh through Shiloh's body, the Christ's body, and they're all one. And he's, and the Most High said in Jeremiah 31 and 1. At the same time, say of the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel? See, and they shall be my people. So at that time, he's going to be the God of all the families of Israel. That's the 12 tribes. And they shall be my people because they're, um, as the Most High said in Jeremiah 31 and 34, and they shall teach no man, every man, his neighbor and every man, his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them. Say of the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity. I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. See, because everyone is going to know the Lord because of through Jesus Christ. You see, the gospel has to be preached in all the nations because the saints and elect Israel is in all the nations. 
So that's why the Bible says um, Christ was was explaining to his disciples the gospel is going to be preached in all the world and then the end come because the 144,000 has to be sealed. And how they're sealed after they heard the, the word of truth, the gospel of their salvation. And after you believe, you were sealed with that Holy Prim, uh, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. See? So that's how they're sealed after they heard the word of truth, the gospel of their salvation. And after they believed, they were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. So they heard the gospel, they're washed, they're born again, they become perfect. And, um, yeah. So the Most High said in Jeremiah 31, verse 1, At the same time, saith the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, uh, families of Israel, and they shall be my people, because they were split at this time, but not through the body, now through the body of Christ, everybody is one again. All right, so that's what the Lord said. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. At the same time, say of the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel and they shall be my people. Why? Because the Most High only knows Israel. You go to the book of, um, I believe it's Amos. Chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. Hear this word that the Lord have spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family, see, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So the Most High speaking directly to the children of Israel, he said, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. So he said, Abraham, and thee shall all, and thee, and thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed when the Most High only knows the families of of uh, Israel. And that's why they were split and scattered to all the nations. But that's why he said in Jeremiah 31 verse 1, at that time will I be the God of all the families of Israel because he's going to be their God again. Because Shiloh gathered them. Um, Shiloh gathered God's elect. His uh, Christ's body, his church, God's church. Okay. Um, yeah, the Most High don't know the world. He knows Israel. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Right. At that time, will I be the God of all the families of Israel? And I will bless them that bless thee and, and curse them that curse so if thee and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Let's go to Genesis 18. Genesis 18, 17 to 19. And the Lord said, shall I hide? And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Um, for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he have which he have spoken of him, right? Spoken of him. Now the most I said, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Um, let's go to Genesis 26. Genesis 26 and... Genesis 26, 1 to 5. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and, and will bless thee. For unto thee and thy seed. I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. 
and I will multiply thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven and will give unto thy seed all these countries and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes and my laws. See that? Remember, the Most High showed Abraham his will, which I showed you. Now, let's go over to Acts chapter 3 and 25. Acts chapter 3 and 25. Okay. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in your seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Now, when you jump down to verse 26, Peter is talking to the Jews here. He's talking to the southern kingdom. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you, the Jews, because salvation is of the Jews the salvation goes to Judah first, to the Jews first, and then the rest of Israel. That's how the Lord set it up. Through their unbelief, through some of the Jews' unbelief, salvation comes on to the rest of Israel. That's why Paul said, see to the Jews, see that you put yourself, seeing that you put yourself unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Because now Christ sent Paul to go to the uncircumcision the uh, Gentiles and he used Peter to go to the circumcision unto you first God having raised up his son Jesus so Jesus comes to the Jews first sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities <laughs> ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers saying unto Abraham and in your seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed now let's go over to Galatians chapter 3 Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3 and 19. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. See? And it was a dank by angels in the hand of the mediator. So the promise seed, right? Let's jump over to Galatians 3, 8 and 14. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. So God would justify the heathen through faith. The heathen here is Israel. Through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham. See, so he preached, the Most High preached the gospel before unto Abraham. What did he say? Saying in thee shall all nations be blessed. Remember, the Most High set this up from the beginning. He declared the end from the beginning. He knew the Israelites was going to transgress. He knew that he would have to scatter them among the heathen. This is all set up. The Lord's, it's the Lord's will, right? Remember, he showed Abraham his will. You see, Jesus said, I came to do the will of him that sent me, not my own will, but the will of the father. Christ came to show the Israelites um, what is the will of the father and they will do the will of the father. So now. Um, And the scripture for seeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. See, because there is no difference because Romans 2 and 9, tribulation and anguish. Upon every soul of man that do of evil to the to the of the Jew first and also of the Gentiles. See, it's no difference because verse 10, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that, that work of good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. You see? 
for there's no respect of, of persons with God. That's why Peter was explaining with Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respect of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and work of righteousness is, is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. The word was only said to the children of Israel. That's what Jesus explained. I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He is the word, the gospel. So the gospel was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, Siaphas, as he explained in John 11, 48 to 52, that Jesus would die for that nation and not that only not only that nation, but he would gather together the children of God that were scattered abroad, the rest of Israel. You see, whether will he go? Will he go, will he, will he go to the dispersed, the scattered among among the Gentiles and teach uh, the Gentiles? Because the rest of Israel is in the nations. That's why Christ explained to the disciples before he left in uh, Acts chapter one, and we will start at verse five. Um, for John truly baptized with water, Jesus said. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they, therefore, were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? The kingdom is within you. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons, seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses, witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth because the gospel has to be preached to all these places these are all places where Israelites are at um all right so and this uh let's go back to Galatians 3 and 8 and the scripture for seeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham. Remember, he showed him his will. The gospel unto Abraham, saying, and these shall all nations be blessed. Let's jump to 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Whither will he go? To the disperse um, among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles. Right? And teach the Gentiles. Let's go to Acts 21 and 21. And they are informed of thee that thou teach of all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. See, because circumcision and uncircumcision avail of nothing, Paul is explaining, but the keeping of the commandments of God and a new creature in Christ. So... <clears throat> They are speaking to Paul and they said, and they are informed of thee that thou teach of all the Jews which are among the Gentiles. See that Cornelius was from another nation, but he was an Israelite. Um, let's go back to Galatians 4, uh, 3 and 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the spirit. Through faith, we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Receive the promise, right? That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, Paul is going to let us know who the promise is sent to, who the promise is for. When you go to Romans chapter 9. In verse 1, Paul said, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continued sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, because the Israelites are only given the adoption. Paul is explaining this here. And the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. 
who are the whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh christ came and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth because jesus went only to israel who is over all god bless forever amen so paul let us know that the promises is giving to his people paul is an israelite he's a jew from the tribe of benjamin so he's letting us know that the promise is giving to his people and this is in paul letters um When you go to Second Ezra, chapter uh, five and forty, the Lord is speaking to Ezra. He said, "Then said he unto me, Ezra is a, also a, a Israelite, a Jew from the tribe of Levi. Then said he unto me, Like as thou canst not, not like as thou canst do none of these things that I have spoken of. Even so canst thou not find out my judgment, or in the end the love that I have promised, that I have promised unto my people." God is telling Esdras. So he said that I have promised unto my people. When you go over to um Second Esdras chapter two and verse thirty-four, and therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen that hear and understand, look for your shepherd. He shall give you everlasting rest. Christ is only the shepherd of Israel. God is the only, he's the shepherd of Israel. That's what David said. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want because David is an Israelite too. He's a Jew from the tribe of uh, Judah. God is the shepherd of Israel. And he said, "Um, and therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen, the heathen, remember Galatians 3 and 8. And the scripture for seeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. When you go to Galatians 2, Paul explains in Galatians 2 in um, the start at verse 6. But of these whom seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me, God accepted no man's persons. For they who seem to be somewhat in com uh, conference added nothing to me. But contrary wise, let me see. All right, let me, yeah. I don't need to read six. Let me read, let me read seven. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. For he that wrote effectually, effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James and Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen, see, and they unto the circumcision. Galatians 3 and 8. And the scripture for seeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying in thee shall all nations be blessed. Second Ezra 2 and 34. And therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen that hear and understand, Look for your shepherd. He shall give you everlasting rest, for he is nigh at hand that shall come in the end of the world. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom, for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Flee the shadow of this world. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. I testify my Savior openly. O oh, receive the gift that is given you, and be glad giving thanks unto him that have called you to the heavenly kingdom. Right. Let's keep reading. So it says heathen. The Lord is speaking to the heathen here. The heathen is is, is Israelites. Let's keep reading. Verse 38. Arise up and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord. Now, who is sealed? Go to Revelations. The hundred and forty four thousand 
12 tribes from each tribe of Israel. They're all Israel. Um, sealed in the feast of the Lord, which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received glorious garments of the Lord. Take thy number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. So the mother, which is Jerusalem, her children have fulfilled the law of the Lord. So it's Zion who's the one that's going to fulfill the law of the Lord. That's why you got the 144,000 in Revelation 14. And they sung the song of Moses. And, um, and they sung the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. They were standing on the sea of glass. That's Zion. Because Christ is going to be standing on Mount Zion with the 144,000, which is Israel. Revelation 14 and 1, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 140 and 4,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. You see? Um, let's let's go back to Second Edges two and forty one. The number of your of thy children, because the Most High made Jerusalem desolate, and all the Israelites were out of the land in seventy A.D. when the Roman Empire came and made Jerusalem desolate. Um, Jew, the Jews were scattered to all nations, as Christ explained what happened in the book of Luke. Chapter 21 and 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. This is Judah. And shall be led away captive into all nations. See? And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Right? Until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Second is just two. So... God made Jerusalem desolate. All the Jews was out of the land. Right? In 70 AD, the Roman Empire, there was the Jews was out of the land. They were scattered to all nations. That's why when you go to Isaiah chapter 6 and um, 10, make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. That's what the Gentiles have to do. They have to convert and be healed by the Lord's word, the gospel. See, because the Gentiles who are among the Gentiles, who are Israelites, they um, took on the customs of and the ways of those nations they were born from. And um, they were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, you know, having no hope without God in the world. But through the blood of Christ, they are not through the blood of Christ. Um, they're in the body of Christ. They're one with the, you know, with uh, Israel, with the rest of Israel. Everybody's one in the body of Christ. Um, they have to convert, you know, changing from their ways and their beliefs and, you know, their, um, yeah, their ways and, and come back to the most high. And convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabited, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. See? And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking, forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet, and it shall be a tenth, and it shall be, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a till tree. And as an oak whose substance is in them, when the when they cast their leaves, so shall the holy seed shall so the holy seed, holy seed shall be the substance thereof. See? So the Lord said, When the Lord have and the land be utterly desolate, and the Lord have removed men far away. Christ told them that there will be not one stone left upon another. The enemy is going to come and cast a trench about them, the Jews, and that's what happened. And um with the Roman Empire and in 70 AD. And um, the Lord said they will be led away captive into all nations. And that's what happened. Now, Jerusalem was desolate, laid to the ground, right? The, the, the Jerusalem was desolate. 
and Jerusalem is Israel's mother. So she became a widow and the, but the Lord promised he's going to return her children to her. And that's why they fulfilled the law of the Lord. And that's why the Most High says in Ezra chapter uh, 2 and 41, the number of your children, thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled because she's desolate, she's a widow, and she's longing for her children, um, which the Most High promised he will give them back. But that's her children will be all righteous at that time, and they will be called trees of righteousness, which is the elect, the saints, the church. And they will be born again and washed and cleansed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they will never be plucked up out of again and never taken away from their mother again. Because they will be born again in the at that time. In the end. Um, when you go to this uh the book of Baruch, chapter um Two and fifteen, mother, embrace thy children and bring them up with gladness. Make their feet as fast as a pillar, for I have chosen thee, say of the Lord. And those that be dead will I raise up again from their places and bring them out of their graves. Them out of the graves, for I have known my name in Israel. Fear not, thou mother of the children, for I have chosen thee, say of the Lord. See? Um. For thy help will I send my servants Essay and Jeremy, after whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee twelve trees laden with diverse fruits, and as many fountains um, flowing with milk and honey, and seven mighty mountains, whereupon there grow roses and lilies, whereby I will fill thy children with joy. All right. Twenty-two. Keep the old and young within thy walls. Whithersoever thou findest the dead, take them and bury them, and I will give thee the first place in my resurrection. Abide still, O my people, and take thy rest, for thy quietness shall come. Nourish thy children, O thou good nurse. Establish their feet. As for the servants whom I have given thee, they shall not one, there shall not one of them perish, for I will require them from among thy number. Be not worried, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrow and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. The heathen shall envy thee. See, this is the regular heathen. The heathen shall envy thee, but they shall not be able to do nothing against thee, saith the Lord. My hand shall cover thee, so that thy children shall not see hell. Be joyful, O thou mother, with thy children, for I will deliver thee, saith the Lord. Remember thy children as sleep, for I have for I shall bring them out of the sides of the earth and show mercy unto them, for I am merciful, saith the Lord Almighty. Embrace thy children until I come and show mercy unto them, for my wells, mercy unto them, for my wells run over and my grace, my grace shall not fail. All right. Now, when you go to the book of Baruch, I'm just showing you a little bit about the mother, which is Jerusalem. That's what Paul said, Jerusalem, which is the mother of us all. Uh, Baruch, I believe it's Baruch. Yeah, Baruch. Four and four. O Israel, happy are we, for the things that are pleasing to God are made known unto us. You see, just like his, the Lord showing his will to his saints, his elect, the mystery of the Gentiles. It's revealed, the Lord revealed these things to his people, the saints and the elect. Pleasing to God are made known unto us. Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel. Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction. Right? Deuteronomy um, 28 and 68. Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved God to wrath. Ye were delivered unto the enemies, which is the nations. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to God. Ye have forgotten the everlasting God, 
that brought you up and ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. See, because Jerusalem is the mother. For when she saw the wrath of God coming upon you, she said, hearken, O ye that dwell about Zion, God have brought upon me great mourning. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters with the which the everlasting brought upon them. With joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow and forsaken of many, of many, see? For who the sins of my children am left desolate. That's why when you go to Second Ezra chapter two, her children, which is the promise seed, the remnant according to the elect, who God is going to give her in the end, they fulfilled the law of the Lord. Thy num uh, Second Ezra 2 and 41. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Lord that thy people which have been called from the beginning may be hallowed. See, because that promised seed that fulfilled the law of the Lord here is the 144,000, the saints and the elected church, the body of Christ who was predestinated, um, whom the Lord called and knew before the foundation of the world, which is in Isaiah, which is in Ephesians 1 and 4. He already knew the church. The church is the first of all creation. Christ, God created the church first. Um, he created this world for his church, which is for his people, Israel, which is the saints and the elect, though, the promised seed. Not the Israelites that disobeyed and transgressed his law. Um, they don't. They were not of the Lord. Um, it's to the promised seed. That's where the promise is going to go, is the promised seed. So called from the beginning may be hollow, you see, because this was all set up. That's why I took you back in the beginning when I when I first talked about this. I made the uh, first video showing you that the Most High declared the end from the beginning because he set this up. You see, he said his counsel uh, will stand and he would do all his pleasure. This was set up by the Most High. And that's why the mystery of the Gentile it had been hidden God from the beginning because the Lord already knew this. You see what I'm saying? The mystery is a mystery. And um, it's, it, it's revealed to his saints. You know, he's revealing it, the mystery of the Gentiles to his saints, his elect, his church. That's what Paul explains that, you know, he reveals it to his saints um, because nobody knew about this mystery you know, before only the Lord knew, you know, uh, it was hid with God, you know, from the beginning. And that's why I was taking you back to the beginning and the Lord declaring the end from the beginning. And the Most High already knew the Israelites will transgress his law, the ones he brought out of Egypt. And he already knew before they went to the land, they would transgress and worship other gods when they got there. And um, that's why the Lord proved them in the wilderness, you know, and uh he already knew. You see what I'm saying? He already knew Adam was going to transgress. Um, God knows everything, you know. So I just wanted to show you that about the Lord declaring the end from the beginning and, you know, Christ coming in the end of, end of the world. He came in the end of the world, Jesus. Um, um, it's another thing I want to show you because this is why also when you read the book of Daniel... The Most High told Daniel what would happen in the, about the, you know, in the end. What did the Lord tell him? Daniel 12. And, um, Daniel 12 and 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. So the Most High told him that knowledge will be increased. The Most High is revealing um, the mysteries to his saints, his elect. When you go to the, the second book of Ezra, chapter 13, um, Ezra, the Lord is speaking to Ezra, he said, second Ezra 13 and 18, now I understand 
as you said, now I understand the things that are laid up in the latter days, which shall happen unto them and to those that are left behind. Therefore are they come into great perils and many necessities, like as these dreams declare. Yet it is easier for him that is in danger to come into these things than to pass away as a cloud out of the world and not to see the things that happen in the last days. And he answered unto me and said, The interpretation of the vision shall I show thee, and I will open unto thee the thing that thou hast required. Whereas thou hast spoken of them that are left behind, this is the interpretation. Because we would think being um, left behind is a bad thing of how we grew up in the church. And taken meaning you're safe, but taken is you're gone, you know, but left behind, you're more blessed. Um, this is the interpretation. He that shall endure the peril in that time have kept himself. They that be fallen into danger are such as have faith, have works and faith toward the Almighty. The saints and the elect that didn't taste death from birth in these last days, they're going to escape the perils by the Lord is letting Ezra know they're going to escape the perils by their works and their faith toward the Almighty because their faith in God and his word and the son, Jesus Christ, blood. Um, they have faith in the, in, in the blood of the lamb, faith toward the Almighty. Now, notice, therefore, that they which be left behind are more blessed than they that be dead. You see, just like the Lord explained to um. Daniel, in the end, knowledge shall be increased. So the mystery of the Gentiles, the Lord will reveal it. It's going to be revealed to his saints. Remember, the Most High is a God of knowledge. So the saints and elect are going to be born again and renewed. What? In the spirit of their mind, renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Um, let me finish off the book of Baruch chapter four. I was just trying to show you that real quick. Let's finish off Baruch four and let's jump down to, um, verse 10. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. With joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow and forsaken of many, who for the sins of my children am left desolate, because they departed from the law of the Lord. Remember I showed you in Isaiah 6, 10, right? To the land be um, desolate, and the Lord remove men far. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow and forsaken of many, for who for the sins of my children and left desolate because they departed from the law of God. But they're going to, the promised seed of Israel is going to fulfill the law of the Lord because the Most High is sowing his law into them right now. That's why he said, I will put my law in their inward parts. It's going to take time. So they're changing their old man and putting on a new man. Um... Verse 13, they knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments, nor trodden in the paths of his discipline and his of his discipline and his righteousness. Right. Because the Lord's um, power is the beginning of righteousness. Let them that dwell about Zion come and remember ye the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting have brought upon them. That's why the Lord talk about those coming from the east and the west. That's the seed that the Most High is going to give to Jerusalem, their mother, which they're the ones that fulfilled the law of the Lord. Shiloh is going to gather them from the east and the west. Um, let them, verse 14, let them that dwell about Zion come and remember ye the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting have brought upon them. For ye have brought a nation upon them from far, a shameless nation and of a strange language, who neither reverence old men, old man nor pity child. These have carried away the dear beloved, the children of the away the dear beloved children of the widow, and left her that was alone desolate without daughters. But what can I help you? For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. Go your way, O my children, go your way, for I am left desolate. I have put off I have put off the clothing of peace, and put on me the sackcloth of my prayer. 
That's why when you go to Revelations, see, because you got the heavenly Jerusalem, this is why we go to Revelations. Um, east. Sorry, let me go to um. Revelations. Um, Revelations um, 19, 7 to 8. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife have made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb, which is the 144,000, the elect saint, the saints, the elect. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. So notice he said, And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb, right? Marriage Supper of the Lamb. When you go to Second Ezra 2 and 38, arise, arise up and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord, right? The marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, when you go to, to the book of Revelations. Um, Feast of the Lord The Marriage Supper of the Lamb You know what, I'll, I'll hold that But let's go back to the book of Luke And finish off at four I have put off the clothing of peace And to put upon me the sackcloth of my prayer I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the Lord, and he shall deliver you from the power and hand of the enemies. Verse 22, Jerusalem said, For my hope is in the everlasting, that he will save you, and joy is come unto me from the Holy One because of the mercy, which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting our Savior. See the mercy. That mercy is to the twelve tribes of Israel. For I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but God will give you to me again. See, with joy and gladness forever. Um, like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see shortly your salvation from our God. Her children is Israel, which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from God. For thine enemy have persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck. My delicate ones have gone through rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught up, caught of the enemies. Be of good cheer, be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto God, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. For as it was your mind to go astray from God, so being returned, seek him ten times more. For he that have brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy again with your salvation. Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Jesus said for salvation is of the Jews because Christ was speaking to uh, his, his people, his brethren. He is the salvation. Everlasting joy again with your salvation. Take a good heart, O Jerusalem. For he that gave thee that name will comfort thee because he's going to give her her children in second address who have fulfilled the law of the Lord. And, and they're all Israel, which is the church, the saints and the elect. Will comfort thee. Gave thee that, that, that uh, for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoiced at thy fall. Miserable are the cities which thy children served. Miserable are Miserable is she, is she that received thy sons. 
For as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desol desolation. If I would take away the rejoicing of her great multitude and her pride shall be turned into mourning. Um, just like Babylon said, you know, that she won't sit as a widow, which the Most High is going to make Mystery Babylon desolate. And her pride shall be turned into mourning because the nations are women, as I explained before. For, for fire shall come upon her from the everlasting, long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from God is her, her children. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sendest away. They, gather, they come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of God. So who is gathering them from the east and the west? The word. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Um, Jacob Israel said, Unto him, Shiloh, shall the gathering of the people be, and he shall gather his elect from um, the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. The word, Shiloh, the Christ, the Messiah, he's going to gather Jerusalem, their mother's um, Jer Jerusalem children, and give her her children again. It's the word to the West by the word of the Holy One and re rejoicing in the glory of God. And we'll talk more about this as we keep going. God, Lord is willing in Jesus great glory name. Amen. So I just wanted to show you that now when you go back to second address. Now we understand who is going to be given back to um, to their mother. It's the 12 tribes of Israel. Arise up and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord. The marriage supper of the Lamb, remember we read, right? Which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received glorious garments of the Lord. Take thy nimble o Zion and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. That's why Romans um, chapter 8 and 3 to 4 says, For what the Lord could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You see, these are those are the one. That's why Christ sent uh, God sent his son and the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Because the church, the saints and the elect are not be walking in the flesh. They're going to be walking and living in the spirit. Um, because they're dead to sin. You see, they're dead to the law. They've been... Uh, baptized into jesus christ they've been baptized into his death they have put on christ okay so the lord said um which have fulfilled the law of the lord the number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled the number just like daniel he's going to stand in the lot right um the hundred and forty four thousand. that's the number which fulfilled the law of the lord the number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled beseech the power of the lord that that your people, thy people, which have been called from the beginning, may be hallowed. Ephesians 1 and 4. I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people. Revelations 14 and 1. Christ the Lamb was on the Mount Zion with 144,000. I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number. And they all praised the Lord with songs. But we get the number in Revelation 7 with John. It's the 144,000. I could not number. And they all praised the Lord with songs. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than, taller than all the rest. That's Christ. And upon every one of their heads, he said, he said crowns and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing, which is the flesh. Because at that time, this time here, they have put on the spiritual bodies. Put off the mortal clothing and have put on the immortal, all right? The, re the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he gave them eternal life. And put on the immortal and have confessed the name of God. Now are they crowned and receive palms. Then said I unto the angel, what young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, it is the son of God whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord, because these are they that didn't deny the Most High. They didn't deny Christ, his son. You see what I'm saying? They didn't deny the Lord. 
they were faithful right these are they that follow the lambs whether so ever he go my sheep hear my voice for the name of the lord stood so stiffly for the name of the lord and they have the father's name written in their forehead jesus said i come in my father's name then the angel said unto me go thy way and tell my people so he's saying the angel is telling um ezra is to go his way and tell his people tell my people what manner of things which his people is israel but men of things and how great wonders the of the wonders of the Lord thy God that have thou hast seen. So when you go to when you go back to verse thirty four, who was called to the kingdom is Israel. These heathen are Israelites, and therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen, that hear and understand, look for your shepherd, your shepherd. You see, because they the ones that fulfilled the law of the Lord. All right. When you read it from Second um, Ezra two thirty four to forty eight. All right, so they're the ones that fulfilled the law of the Lord. Now I want to show you, and then we're going to get back real quick. Is that Galatians? I think I was at Romans, right? Okay, when you go to Revelations, because the kingdom of heaven, when you take a look at the kingdom of heaven, let's jump to uh, Revelation 21 and 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. There was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Remember, um, those that were silt in the feast of the Lord and those that are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Revelations 19 and 9. Um, 7 to 8. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife have made herself ready and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints just like the bible says paul explained circumcision and uncircumcision avail of nothing but the keeping of the commandments of god and the saints that elect the church is the ones that keep the commandments in the faith of jesus christ revelation 14 and 12 Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, right? Revelation 12 and 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So only the saints and elected church, the body of Christ, keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. We through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. So they're the ones that's keeping the commandments of the Lord and the faith of Jesus. They're going to be the ones that's going to enter through the gates. Revelations 22 and 14. Bless are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. You see, because the saints and the elect are the ones that's keeping the commandments. And they're the ones that have the faith in Jesus. So they're going to enter um, through the gates. Because in Jerusalem, I'm going to show you there's 12 gates which is the name at each gate has the name of the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, Fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Let's go back to Revelation 19, finish off at eight. Let's jump down to nine, to nine. And he said unto me, right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of God. Now let's go to Revelation 21 and 1. John saw, what did John see? He said, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there, were, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, because... That's why the Bible says, this, you know, know ye not that you that ye are the temple. Your body is the temple of um, 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in which is in you, which is in you, which ye have of God and ye are not your own. See? For ye are brought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, 
which are God's. I'll talk more about that when we get to the talk of the, the church, the saints and the elect is God's building because they're being translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Israel, the saints and the elect, the church is the kingdom. Um, yeah, we'll talk more about that. God, Lord's will in Jesus' great glory name. Amen. Let's go back to Revelation 21 and 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Remember, God is a spirit, right? They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and have no confidence in the flesh. Um, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Um, now, the Lord is that spirit. See, because Paul, Paul explained, uh, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So in order to enter into the new Jerusalem, you have to have a spiritual body. You have to um, have put off the mortal clothing, the flesh. Um, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. The Old Testament, Old Testament, the most how says that Israel will be his people and he will be their God. That's why God said, um, uh, God said, uh, at that time, will I be the God of all the families of Israel? Let me see when I get another verse, when you go to, um, go to Jeremiah 30 and verse 3 the Lord said for lo the days come say of the Lord that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah say of the Lord and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers and they shall possess it that's in the end at the coming of Christ jump down to verse 9 but they shall but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king whom I will raise up unto them um let me see if it's another verse there's a verse about that. Um, let me see. Okay. Um, let's jump over to J Jeremiah 30 and 22. And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. See, he's speaking to Israel here. We jump up to verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy womb, saith the Lord. Because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. See, because Jesus is the physician. He's he's come to um he's come to heal their wombs, his people wombs, um, because um they needed healing, right? And the word is the cure. Um let me see. Cease. Cease. See, the Jeremiah 31 and 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, save the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So when you go to Revelation 21, what did John say? And I heard a great voice, Revelation 21 and 3, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. That's speaking to Israel. Verse four, and God shall wipe away all tears from from their eyes, right? Now, that's talking to Israel also because when you go to the book of Isaiah, um, 25 and verse eight, he will swallow up death and victory and the Lord God will wipe away all tears from off all faces and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth for the Lord hath spoken it. Verse nine, and it shall be said in that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him and we will and we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. So that's talking to Israel again. Revelation 21 and 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death because the Lord swallowed death. Right. He swallowed it up. Now the Lord is the Lord of the living and the dead because Christ have the keys of death and hell now. Um, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, 
Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these are for these words are true and faithful. Um let's jump down to verse nine. And there came and and there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away, me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal. And had a wall great and high and had 12 gates. Why 12 gates? Because after the 12 tribes of Israel and at the gates, 12 angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. See, because the kingdom is for the children of Israel. That's why the 144,000 are sealed in Revelation 7, which is 12,000 from each tribe of the children of Israel. And in Ezra, they fulfilled the law of the Lord. So the Most High gave them back to their mother. You see, they were sealed in the feast of the Lord. The heathen from 34, that's their Israelites that were called to the kingdom. But we got to we, we'll keep going and I'll keep talking about it. But I just wanted to show you this. Um, which which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel? All right. And you have um, on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, three gates and on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof in 140 and four cubits, according to the measure of a man. See, just like it's 144,000. This is, this is of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper. And the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardis, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysoprasis, the eleventh a jacinth, the twelfth an amethyst. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls, 12 pearls. Every, uh, every several gate was of one pearl and the street of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. The nations which are saved is is, is the Israelites. I'm, but as we're going to keep going, I'm going to show you. Remember, you have to have a body to enter the kingdom, Paul explains. Now, let's keep going, though. And the nations of them which are saved shall be shall walk in the light of it, right? Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. See, because um, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Right. See, because the Lord said, just like the Lord said here in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, let me see. see, just like the Lord said. Now, will you also go here before I go here? Now, notice it says, 
it said um, in Revelations 21, it says, And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it, right? Now, what you got to understand, this is why the Lord, the Bible says, He have made us kings and priests, right? Now, I want to show you something. When you go to, I believe it's the book of Isaiah 41, uh, or is it, no, not 41. Isaiah 45 and let's start at verse 21. Tell ye and bring them near ye, uh, near ye. Let them take counsel together. Who have declared this from ancient time? Who have told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am for I am God and there is none else. Uh, there is none else. So notice uh, else the most High said, look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. And Revelations 21 and 24, it says, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Right. Because what you got to understand is that righteousness, the Lord is righteousness. Right now. I want to read this here in Isaiah 61 and 10. God said, I will I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he have clothed me with the garment of salvation. He have covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. See, because what's going to happen is Israel is in the nations and they're going to be the ones that fulfill the law of the Lord. Christ is the righteousness. That's why God said, "Um, no weapon that is formed against thee, which is Israel, shall prosper. And he said, uh, their righteousness is of me. See, because... Um, remember in the book of Acts chapter 10 Peter explained he that feareth God and doeth righteousness is accepted with him so it don't matter if they're in the nations right they're still ex the Israelites are still accepted with the Lord as long as they fear the most high and doeth righteousness just like Cornelius now the Lord said so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations for Zion's sake will I not hold my peace and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest the Lord said until righteousness there thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth verse 2 and the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness in all kings your glory and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name um, verse 12 And they shall call them the holy people The redeemed of the Lord And thou shalt be called sought out A city not forsaken So the Most High said um, For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace And for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth and the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness in all kings thy glory and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Now, um, in the first kingdom, the kings of the earth are going to be, um, they're going to be put into the pit, right? The gates of if I'm not mistaken, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to speak on it right now, but when we, if we get up to there, then I'll explain more about that. I just want to just stay on this, but the righteousness, the most highest people are going to do. Remember God's people is in all the nations, right? His people is in all the nations. 
um, Revelations 5 and 9, and they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth, right? And we shall reign on the earth. So Revelations 21 and 24, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, right? And they shall and they shall in no wise enter, and there shall in no wise enter to it anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So those that's written in the Lamb's book are the only ones going to enter. So Israel fulfilled the law of the Lord. And um The righteousness is springing up because Israel is the ones that fulfilled the law of the Lord. Remember, the Most High said he will not. He said. The Lord said, for Zion's sake, will I not hold my peace? And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. You see, because. The most high is about righteousness, you see, and his power is the beginning of righteousness. That's why um, for what the Lord could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God sent forth his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to them that believe, you see. Um, because the the Israelites are saved, the saints and elect are saved by God's righteousness, which is Christ, as I showed you earlier. So they're they're going to be the ones that. Um, that's what the Bible says: we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. The nations, uh, won't be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven because they, um, Christ. Only came to give eternal life to his church. So you, in order to enter into the kingdom, the new Jerusalem, you have to have a spiritual body because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So you have to have a spiritual body in order to enter into to the kingdom. You see what I'm saying? If you don't, you won't be able to enter into it. That's why there's 12 gates. The only ones that's going to enter in is the saints and the elect. Who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. They're going to be able to enter in. That's what the Bible says. Let the righteous nation. Um, what is that scripture? Uh, let the, I think it's. Uh, let the. Maybe Matthew. No, not Matthew. The, I think it's uh, let the righteous nation which keep the truth enter. It's one is one of those scriptures, but I'll explain more of this maybe down the road. God Lord is willing, Jesus great glory name, Amen. But I just wanted to show you about that, right? Um. Now let's jump down to Revelations twenty two. Righteousness is going to spring up because just I'm going to show you one more thing. Just like when you go to Daniel, right? Daniel explained. Daniel explained uh, about the four kingdoms, right? Which is, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, the head of gold, which is the four beasts, four kings. These are heathen nations. And. Daniel explains it, Daniel 2 and 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Right? 45. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands 
and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold, the great God have made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure because Zion is going to blossom and they're going to bring forth the fruit. You see what I'm saying? That's why God said they shall be at that time all your people shall be all righteous and they shall be called trees of righteousness because they fulfilled the law of the Lord, the elect. And righteousness is going to spring forth because they fulfilled the law of the Lord. And the elect is in all the nations. You see what I'm saying? And they're keeping God's law in all these nations. And they're redeemed. They're going to be redeemed when the Lord comes. You see what I'm saying? Um, yeah, that God's kingdom is going to break in pieces these kingdoms. Daniel is explaining to, to uh, Nebuchadnezzar about the interpretation. That's why when you go to um, the kingdom is going to be given to who? The saints of the most high. Um, Daniel chapter 7 and 17. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever even forever and ever. You see? Jump down to 22. Until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. When you jump over to 27. In the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the, of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And all the minions shall serve and obey him. You see? So the kingdom is going to be given to the saints of the Most High, which keep the commandments and the faith of Jesus Christ. That's the that's who the kingdom is going to be given to. Okay? So I just wanted to show you a little bit more about that. And um, let's go back to Revelation 22 and let's start at 1. But we'll talk more about it and I'll show you. As we um, move forward, God was willing, Jesus, great glory, name, amen. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God <clears throat> and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit. Um... Okay, I'm gonna stop here because we have we went to the two uh hour mark. We went a little over the two hour mark. But um I'll we'll talk more about the nations that are saved in Revelations 22, 21 and 22. We'll talk more about that as we uh move forward. God loves will in Jesus' great glory name, amen. But um when we on the next talk, we'll finish back. I'll go back to um Galatians 3, 8. And 14. So I just wanted to show you about the Jerusalem. The mother is a widow and um, God giving her her children in the end. And. Uh, yeah, so we can understand the Gentiles and the heathen, the heathen that's in second Ezra 34. Those are Israelites. They're the ones that fulfilled the law of the Lord and they were sealed in the feast. All right. So we'll continue from Galatians 3, 8 and 14. God Lord's willing and Jesus great glory name. Amen. I hope this video was very edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the God of Israel, the one true living God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, God of Gods, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of the 12 tribes of Israel. In the name of his word, wisdom, and son, and knowledge, and word of life, and eternal life, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth, Love to all, peace be unto all. Till next time, God Lord's willing in Jesus' great glory name, amen. Bye-bye.